Okay, so change in variables and multi-variable um, integration. So this process follows the same step when we do u substitution. So for example, that u equal, let's say, you know, some arbitrary value um, f of x, y, or just x is of. So then, therefore, du would just be the derivative of it. And then from there, you could change the bounds of integration with respect to u. Right, just plugging it in. This process is the same process as we do here, but in multivariable. So instead of just u, we're going to have u and v because of the x and y coordinates. Okay. Now, how this theory comes into play is first we start with actual u and v. So some arbitrary uh, variables you want to choose. And then we have this, this region S. Okay. And then once we do this transformation, into the xy plane, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So this transforms into here, and I can also go vice versa, just by going the inverse. Okay. That's the process of what the change of variables theory is applied here. Uh, for our case, more importantly, is well, we want to figure out, you know, given some arbitrary surface, where now it's not just straight lines, it's curvatures, right? So, for example, if we have the surface looking like this, like that, how can we find the area or you know anything we want based off this information? Okay. Now, in our case, as we've done a little earlier before, is well, if we just transform this, going this way now, in terms of v and u, this ends up being a rectangle. All right, so if this isn't being a rectangle, now going backwards is mostly what we're going to be doing is, well, what does this look like in three dimensions or two dimensions? Well, given vectors, you know, if we have sides here, these are represented as vectors in three dimensions. So we have a vector, let's say, r from the point here, and it goes this way and this way. Well, if this is, we could find the area of this very easily, right? It's so rectangle, so length times width, or just base times height. Same thing applies here. If this is now, if this vector going from here to there is, let's say, vector B, and this from here to here is vector A, well, the nice thing is, well, you know how to find the area in this portion. This is the cross product, right? Or if you want the process, right? We want to find the area of this portion. That's the area of a parallelogram or the cross product itself. So really what we're doing is, okay, we're going to find, figure out is we can just bring up all of these individual rectangles in the UV area. So if we just bring them up into the surface and we can go backwards and that's exactly the same process as using the cross product of each one. Okay? Now, since we want area, we're just going to find the magnitude of the cross product. Okay? Now, just in case you forgot, so it would be in terms of U and V in this case because it would go from here to there. So we would say vector UV uh, cross product vector with respect to v, so that we get the um, the magnitude of that. Okay. Now, when we take the magnitude of it, just a quick reminder when it comes to cross product, this is going to be the derivative with respect to u, with respect uh, the y respect to u, and then this is always going to be zero because there's no there's no z value, just x and y. And same thing applies here. So it's dx dv and dy dv times zero. So this is so important because it comes to such a special place. This um, type of uh, determinant is something called the Jacobian. Okay. So the Jacobian is the transformation t that gives the... Um, the cross product, basically, of this portion. And it's something like this. So it really is just the, pro the cross product of two vectors. Again, it's so popular, it, you know, it's called the Jacobian for that main reason. It's a transformation from one variable to the other variables itself. Okay. And like I said earlier, the theory behind why this works is, you know, again, if we're just given, let's say we're given this plane to be true, and we have some surface looking like that. 
and we pick a little rectangle in the surface. Okay. Well, again, if we transform this to what we really want, the xy plane, just like above a curvature now, because it's now the surface. And the process now becomes, well, I can engulf this entire surface into a rectangle. And I can do anything I want in this rectangle. And therefore, this applies here. It's now engulfed in this rectangle R, which is kind of nice. So all we're really doing is when it comes to this, uh, how we're going to find this, these integrals, and how to find up some of these areas and volumes of this type of stuff, is for each individual rectangle or square we have in, in space, it can be expressed as a term of an individual rectangle in VES, or in this case, VU regions, just, you know, just by changing the integration bounds itself. Okay. Now the key thing is that it always has to be a closed one, so meaning it has to be you know not like this, right? There's a divot; it has to be a closed surface itself. That's the key thing when it comes to these, because because if it's open, we can't engulf it within a rectangle. Okay. So, how do these actually work out, or how does this transformation end up being in play? Okay. So, change of variables in double integration. Okay. Suppose T is a transformation whose Jacobian is non-zero and that T maps the region S in UV plane onto the region R in the XY plane. Okay, so just like we talked about earlier. So suppose that F is continuous on R and that R and S are type 1 or type 2 planes, right? So that goes back to how you integrate going this way or that way, with respect to X and Y. Um, also, T, T is a one-to-one -one relationship. That's a key thing. Not It won't work. Then, the double integral of the region from, of f of x is equal to the, the um, change of bound or change of variables of x du dv, y dv dv, times the Jacobian itself. So that's how we're going to change our bounds when it comes, or change our variables, sorry, when it comes to double integration. And sometimes it gets a little easier, right? This is a, just another output. So if you guys remember in multi, or sorry, in single calculus, single variable calculus, you could, you know, change your um, change your variables and then plug in the individual um, portions or just go vice versa and go backwards, right? It's just up to you. So this is just an alternative to integration, double, um, double integrations. And sometimes it makes it easier, you know, and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. So let's try an example so you can see how this, this new equation will work out here. Okay, so use the change of variables, so we so you can see how this works, of x equaling u squared minus v squared, y is equal to uv, to evaluate the integral, the double integral of y dA, where r is the region bounded by the x-axis, and the problem is y equals 4 minus 4x, and then y squared is equal to uh, 4 plus 4x, and the other one is y has to be greater than 0. All right, so lots happening here, so let's just, let's just look what's going on. All right, so if I were just want to graph what this region is going to look like in the xy plane, we're just going to graph each one individually. So first off, says y has to be greater than or equal to 0, so everything is above being positive. Okay. And we'll just solve for y. So in this case, if I just solve for y, I take the square root. So you notice uh, x equaling 1 it gets you zero. So this is the point one zero. And maximum goes up, it goes to two, right? If I plug in two, I also get zero there. Or sorry, if x equals zero, y equals two. So this point goes roughly like this. So it goes this direction. So this is the point zero two. And this is the graph y equals square root of x minus 4x. Okay. Well, on the other side, it's the same. Just the positive part, right? So plug it in on negative 1. Gives me that. And plug it in 0 and 4x. That gives me way up here. 
but it's bounded by it, so it's going to cross it here and then go up. So this is y equals square root of 4 plus 4x. Okay, now it's actually pretty important why these points cross and where they're going to cross. It's because now when we convert this into u and v, that comes into play. Now, I'm going to go in this direction and eventually down that way. So I'm just going to go this way. You'll see what I mean by that in a little bit. Okay. Now, I want to see what does this look like when I transform it to u and v. Okay. So now I'm going to go back into here and just solve backwards. Now what I mean by that is I'm going to plug every single point, so all of these three points or itself and see where we go. So for example, if I plug in zero, or sorry, one zero, that means x is going to equal to one and y is equal to zero. And I want to solve, when is this going to happen? Okay. And we do that for every single point. And we see what that conversion is into this value is here. Okay. Well, this is only true if u equals 0 or v equals 0. So if u equals 0, therefore, v has to equal, well, if v equals 0, what does that work? Oh, it doesn't work. So u cannot, uh, u cannot equal 0, because this, this won't work, because you can't have a positive. So v is forced to be equal to 0. That means u has to equal 1. So we have the point 1, 0, which is right here. So it starts here. And I'm going to go this way. So the next point is 2, 0. So x is going to be 0. So they have to be this both same value. And y is 1. Oh, sorry, y is 2. Y is 2. Well, the only way this is possible if both u and v equal each other, because solving for v, v equals u, so that has to equal 1. So this is the point 1, 1. So it goes in this direction. So you could follow the template as we go along. Okay, next point, negative 1, 0. And we do the same process, and you eventually see this gets you here. So we get our rectangle there. And that's when we buy a transformation. Now this is important because now this gives us our bounds when we do our conversion. So we have to actually do this process. Okay. Now that we have our bounds, because now u is going to go from 0 to 1, and v is going to go equal from 0 to 1. Those are our bounds now with respect to u and v. So now the only thing we have to figure out is our Jacobian. Because x and y are already in terms of v and u, right? We're just going to plug in y there. That's calling we call that a day. So now we're going to do our Jacobian. So we'll put j for Jacobian. And this goes back to our definition. Right? So it's going to be each one individual, so derivative of this is going to be 2u. Derivative of this respect to v is going to be negative 2v. And then derivative of respect to u is going to be 2v. And then derivative of respect to v is going to be 2u. Okay, so therefore this gives us this times this minus that times that. So 4u squared 
minus minus makes positive, 4v squared. So now our integral is going to go from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, because of our new bounds, of y times our Jacobian. And I'll do u and then b. So putting this again a little bit easier to look at, just distributing this in gives us approximately, or gives us actually this, right? And then we just integrate uh, to the, uh, you know, normally. So take the with respect to u, this is u to the fourth. And the v. Take integral with respect to u, so u squared. You evaluate that at 1 and 0. So plug in 0 and for u, that just goes away for 0, so we just plug in 1. So we get 2v plus 4v to the third. And we integrate that from 0 to 1, so dv. Alright, so this is v squared plus v to the fourth. Evaluate at 0 and 1, which just gives us 2. And there we go. So all that work for 2. Okay. So let's try another one. So find the double integral of this, where r is the trapezoidal region of the vertices 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, negative 2, and 0, negative 1. Okay, so let's just start with just graphing our, our points here. Okay, so first point is 1, 0, so this is x and y here. So 0, 1, right, 1, 0 here, and we go 2, 0, so we go here, okay. and then 2, 0, negative 2, and there, so it kind of looks like this. Here's our trapezoidal. Okay, so now, unlike the last one, we have to actually figure out what these regions look like. So what are the equations that create this region? Okay. And for this one, right, it's just y equals mx plus b. So you just find the slope, and then, you know, it crosses that negative 2, so, you know, negative 2 is going to be the y-intercept. You go up 1, 2, over 1, 2, so just 1 over 1. So that's the graph, this line here. And then the graph of this one, you do the same process. Well, it goes across negative 1 as the y-intercept. And same thing, up 1 over 1, so it's just those as our lines. Okay. So now, just like we did over here, we want to transform this. So now let's go with respect to v and u. And now we're going to do the same thing as we did above. So every single point, we have to transform it now using the u's and v's. Okay. But the question is, how does that work? Okay. So now at this point, now we can choose how we want to uh, change our variables. Okay. And we're going to change our variables based off what we're trying to integrate. In other words, these two things right there. Okay, so we're going to let u equal x plus y, and we're going to let v equal y minus x minus y. And now, same thing. We're going to put every single point into here and figure out what the relationship is going to be. So, for example, we're going to go. Let's see which way we're going to go. We'll go this way. 
So our first point is going to be 1, 0. So if I plug in 1 and 0 in for x and y, we can figure out this is much easier to find the u values, right? So plug it in, so u is going to be 1, and v is going to be 1. So we get the point 1, 1. This point is right here. So plug in 2 in for x and 0 in for y, we get 2, 2. So it's going this way, this orientation. Next point, plug in 0 in for x and negative 2 in for y. So u is going to be negative 2 and v is going to be positive 2. So u is negative 2, v is positive 2. Right, and then the last one, 0 and negative 1. So u is going to be negative 1, and v is going to be positive 1. And there is our transformation. Okay. So now, unlike the other one where we had regions, right, we have different things going on. We have an actual trapezoid here going on. So we'll fix the variables. So we'll fix u. So u goes from this point to this point. So from negative 2 to 2. Or actually, since let's see what I'm going Actually, we may not want to do it this way because we have to do break it up. We'll go, um, go this way instead. Yeah, well, in every respect to, to u first. So if we do our integration this way, that means v is going to be bounded here. So v is going to be bounded from 1 to 2. And then u is going to alternate. So from here to there. And this is the graph of what? Well, let's see. So again, you could either just find the slopes, find the intercepts. Uh, but this will just give you v equals u as it goes through the origin. And this is the point, this is the graph, v minus, uh, v equals negative u. Okay. So therefore u goes from negative v e to positive v. E. Right now it's in terms of a function. Okay. All right, so now lastly, we got a finer Jacobian. Okay. Now we got a problem though. Um, what's x and y? Right? So can't do that yet. We gotta solve for x and y individually. So I'll just bring this to the other side. So u minus y is equal to x. And do the same thing here. So y is equal to x minus v. Okay, so if I insert this here, or how do I do this? Yeah, we can do that. So u equals x plus v equals x. So add it. So u plus v is equal to 2x. So therefore, x is equal to 1 half u plus v. And the nice thing is bringing it back. So now I'll just plug in this whole thing in for here. We get the exact same process. Just the minus instead of the plus. Okay, now that we have x and y equals something, now we can find the Jacobian. So, to really respect uh, x first, right, to really respect to u, it's just going to be 1 half. With respect to v, 1 half. With respect to u, 1 half. With respect to v, negative 1 half. So this Jacobian is going to be negative 1 half minus this plus times this. So this is a fourth, sorry. 
fourth or negative one half. All right, so now our integral is going to go from one to two, from negative v to v of this, which is just going to be e to the u over v times one half, or negative one half in this case, or yes. Oh, actually, let me talk about that real quick as well. Yeah. So, let's go back over here. So you can think of this as the determinant has to be positive. So we're going to take the absolute value all the time. So if I go back down here, the reason why we took absolute, we didn't take the absolute value here is this is always going to be positive, right? Squared and squared make positive, and this is plus, so always positive. So now down here, because the Jacobian was negative one half, take the absolute value and we can say positive one half. So that's why this is going to be you know, positive one half instead of negative one half being evaluated there. Right, so the um, UDV. Okay. All right, so now at this point, it's just a U substitution to follow up what we're about to do. Right, so let U equal, well, let W, did a letter. Let W equal U to the V one half. Take the drew with respect to U, so we dw is equal just to v to that du so bring it over we're going to multiply by v and then v is fine right because we're assuming it's a constant right because we're only integrating with respect to u only so v is considered a constant in terms of like five which so that means we could technically do that okay so therefore this is going to equal to we'll bring all everything to the outside so I'll put this one half on the outside. Integral of 1 to 2 of v, e to the u over v, dv. Oh, almost forgot. Not yet. I'm mushing too much. We still got to change our bounds here. So this is v e to the u over v, evaluate it at negative v and v. So, all I'm going to do is plug in u there. So, if I restart u, so it's going to be v e to the 1 minus v e to the, bring it over here. That's just negative 1 power. Now I can finally integrate that. There we go. Okay. So I'll factor out a V. This is just a constant. So this becomes v squared over 2 times 1 half of all of this. You've got it 1 and 2. So now plug it in 2 and then 1. So 2 squared is 4. So this becomes 2. Cancel also 2 here. Plug in the 1. It gives you 1 half, 1 fourth. And Doing all of this a process, I get three fourths times this. Whatever that ends up being on a calculator.